Hi, I'm The Scrub and you're here for one reason. We're here to stop Alexander from destroying the world. Man, I think there's a common denominator for all of these world ending situations. Although we're coming up to the last line of defense for Midas, we're gonna have a good time because you can't spell onslaughter without laughter. Well, that was terrible. Yeah, it wasn't my best joke. Let's just cool it with the pun related jokes, all right? Rest of the video. No worries, boss, you got it. No more, I mean it. Okay, I got it. Time to learn about the burden of the sun. Simplify. Hydrotherma missile as a tank buster. The boss will turn to a random party member and charge up Mega Beam. It will release the shoot to whoop in a straight line AOE that will cause a Von stack and a severe knockback. To avoid being hit by this, just move to the side if it turns to face you. The boss will then cast Perpetual Ray, which is a mini tank buster that puts a stack of magic Von up on the tank and then perform another tank buster. In today's item level, you overgear the hell out of this, so it shouldn't be a problem. The boss will then cast Execution. The boss will get these colored rings around it and four adds will spawn in. Burst the adds down as fast as possible because if they explode, they'll give everyone a Von stack and a damage down. They don't have a a lot of health, but you also don't have a lot of time to destroy them. During the ad phase, AoEs will appear below random players called Seed of the Sky. If you get hit with one of these, it will give you a Von stack and a damage down. Once you defeat the Onslaughter, it will take off into the sky. The arena itself will change and two robots from A6 will land in the arena. Vortex are on the west side of the platform and Brawler on the east side. Both robots will have tank busters, so both tanks will need to aggro one of each of the robots. Vortex will target two random players with an eye shot above their head and a point blank AoE around them. A short time after that, it will target two different players with an AoE at their feet. The eye shot players will drop an ice puddle that will give a frozen debuff if you're standing in it, and the normal AoE players will drop a lava puddle that will give you the debuffs of heavy and sludge if you're standing in it. The dots can get pretty spicy, so watch out if you're standing in them. When Brawler charges up its attack, you'll need to watch for how many fists he will have his cannons attached to. If it's just one, he will hit the tank with a huge tank buster hit, so don't stand with a tank. If both fists are powered up, he will randomly target a party member with a stack marker, which means you'll need to group up and share the damage. Otherwise, he can easily one-shot you if everyone is spread out. After both robots have been defeated, the other two robots from A6 will come down into the fight. Blaster in the north and Swindler in the south. Again, both tanks will need to take the aggro of one robot as each will do tank busters. Swindler will raise half the tiles in a chessboard like pattern and give them an orange glow. It will then give you one of two debuffs, high arithmetics with a purple debuff or low arithmetic with a red debuff. You will need to be the opposite of what your debuff says. I normally tell myself red, high, purple, low in order to check my debuff and which part of the arena I will need to be standing in for this mechanic. Swindler will then start casting height. If you're on an incorrect platform when this cast finishes, you'll be damaged and get a Voln stack. Blaster will have a room wide AOE called Mind Blast. If you get this purple marker above your head, you will be targeted with a Blaster clone, which will land on the spot that you are standing on. It will then turn around and target a random player and dash across the arena in a straight line AOE where that player was standing. If you get hit by any of these clones, it will give you a Voln stack. To avoid getting hit, just try to move out the way of where they're all facing. Shortly after you defeat the final pair, all the robots will fly away. All five robots will form one larger robot called Brute Justice. It will cause a knockback to all players and then become targetable. If you haven't listened to the background music before, you'll want to now because this piece is a certified banger. Double Rocket Punch is a huge tank buster in which the damage can be shared between the tanks, or if you're going to take it solo, mitigate it because it will pack a punch. Nope, that's it. What? We told you no more puns. All right, I'll stop. No, up. Uh Get out. Now. Oh, this is just discrimination. Security, escort him out of the building, please. I was enjoying a succulent Final Fantasy raid guide. We'll let HR know and be in touch. You will be hearing from my attorney about that. Get your hands off my pig! Now, where were we? Okay, double rocket punch to huge tank buster. Ah, here we are. Four AoEs will appear below random players. If you get hit by any of these AoEs, it will give you a Von stack and a damage down. At the same time that these AoEs go off, one player will get a stack marker. Group up to share the damage. Brute Justice will then turn to a random party member and cast Apocalyptic Ray. This is a continuous conal AoE in this direction. For every tick you are standing in this AoE, it will give you a Von stack. Brute Justice will target one player and cast Super Jump. No matter where this player runs, the boss will jump towards and punch the ground where this player is standing. Everyone else in the vicinity of this player will be knocked back considerably. So if you get targeted by the boss with Super Jump, just move away from everyone else. Flare throw is a massive conal AOE cleave directed towards the tank. The boss will fire rockets into the air and they will rain down three times in room wide AOEs called Short Needle. Another double rocket punch will go out while these AOEs are going off. The boss will also turn to a random player and cast Mega Beam. If you get hit by this, it's a huge knockback and a Von stack. Just move to the side in order to dodge it. At this point, the boss will become untargetable, jump away, and slam back into the middle of the arena with J-Kick. Following this, it will split apart. There will be two players that will get frozen puddle AOEs. Two more AOEs will appear below players which will cause lava puddles. And in the middle of three squares, we'll have mine spawned in. You'll have 
have to spread out and avoid these as best you can as everyone in this small mechanic will run around like headless chickens. Roller will then arrive on the platform and target someone with a stacking beam cannon, so stack together to soak the damage or risk being deleted. When that goes off, there will be a proximity marker in the middle of the arena which you will need to get away from and Swindler will arrive and perform the red high purple low mechanic. While this is going on, Onslaughter will drop down and target a random party member and cast Mega Beam. Just move to the side to dodge it. Make sure you stay on the relevant high or low platform as that mechanic will go off just before Mega Beam fires. After this goes off, everything will disappear and the arena will return to normal. From here, Brute Justice will repeat mechanics until it has been defeated. Brief extra side note. This fight does have an enrage. From the moment you pull on Slaughter, you will have 12 minutes to kill Brute Justice. If you run out of time, the fight itself will instantly cast Final Sentence, which will delete you and your party, and you'll have to start again. Duty Finder will have an almost 0% chance of seeing this, but it doesn't hurt to mention it. Remember to use the Limit Break, and congratulations, you have beaten the Raid series of Alexander Midas. And remember, cool guys don't look at explosions. My name is The Scrub. Thank you for watching.